Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we're going to be creating custom brushes in Photoshop. And if you haven't checked out my brand new class, Intro to Photoshop yet, be sure to head on over to the link in the video description and the one that I put on the screen. And if you're just starting out or you need some quick pointers or you feel a little intimidated, it's a nice way to dive in without feeling overwhelmed by the program. And what we're doing today with these custom brushes, you'll be able to to integrate in the project that we actually create in that class. So once again, the link is in the video description and it's on screen. Okay, so on screen right now, you can see the final outcome of this tutorial. And I'm going to show you a bunch of different settings that you can apply to your brushes and you can get some really cool results really fast. So I'll explain all the different settings and then we'll have some fun. So you can see on my screen right now, we've got kind of the brush working in a line. We've got it really scattered and rotated. This one's a little tighter, and then we've got it really spaced out, and then we've even added a little bit of texture to it. So we're gonna keep it really basic. We're just gonna use a triangle for this one, or you can use any shape that you want. Uh, you can bring in vector elements from Illustrator if, you, if you're comfortable creating shapes there, or what we're gonna do is we're just gonna create everything from scratch in Photoshop. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is go File, New. And I always like starting my brushes off with a square artboard. And it's nice to consider what kind of format your brush would be used in, since what I'm thinking is, is these would be used for web or an Instagram post. I'm going to keep mine in RGB and I'm gonna work as if this were just intended for web. So I'm gonna reduce my resolution to 72 and I'm gonna change my increments to pixels and I'm just gonna input 500 pixels by 500 pixels and hit okay. All right, so what we don't want is a white background, which we could have selected in the previous screen, but no problem here. All you have to do is create a new layer and then you can just drag your background to the trash can. Okay, so we're gonna actually create a brush from a brush, which is kind of funny. So we're gonna come over here. I've got different colors right here right now, so I'm just gonna click this little icon just to restore my defaults. So I've got black in the front and I've got white in the back, which is exactly what I need. If white is in the front, just hit this little arrow right here and it'll switch them, or you can hit the letter X on your keyboard. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is hit B to activate our brush tool. And we're just gonna use a hard brush, which is this one right here. If you're not sure if it's hard, the best way to tell is where it says hardness, make sure this is at 100% and you'll be good to go. Okay, so if you want to enlarge the size of your brush, just hit your close bracket key on your keyboard, or if you'd like to reduce it, you can hit your open bracket key on your keyboard, just like that. So to make a triangle, we're gonna make this super simple. You're just gonna click once, then you're gonna hold shift, and then click your other corner and then it'll make it the line straight between those two dots. Then I'm gonna hold shift again and click once. And then once again, I'm gonna hold it up here, hold shift and click one more time. And then I can just click and paint the inside. And now we've got our triangle. So the next thing we're gonna do is go edit, define brush preset. And we'll just name this triangle and hit okay. So now we're gonna create a new document so we can test it out and we'll adjust all of our settings there. So I'm gonna go file, new, and we'll make this one a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. Actually, let's do two thousand pixels. So it's nice and big. We'll keep it 72 RGB and we'll hit okay. All right, so now we're gonna create a new layer so we can test all of this out. And the first thing we're gonna do is set a color mode. And since we've got black and white right here, um, not super fun, so we're gonna change these. So I'm just gonna click on the black and I'm gonna choose a random pink color. And then I'm gonna click on the white and I'm gonna choose a blue color. And I like choosing colors that are kind of in the same family. If you looked at a color wheel, they're very close to each other. Um, that way, when you have different variations in color that you can define for your brush, it'll seem like it's part of the same family and it won't look really muddy. So I'm gonna hit OK. And the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna open up our brush. And if you don't have this open, you can get to it by going window brush and it'll pop open. And the first thing we're gonna do is click where it says brush tip shape. And this is where we can define the space. See, if I just colored it out right now, it's really close by, you can't even really tell it's a triangle. So this part right here, 
defines how far apart these are spaced. And you can see we've got a really nice little preview right here. And up here, this is kind of defining um, how your size is starting out, and I like reducing it so I can see a lot of the brush right away. So if I paint with it, you can see we've got a nice little string of triangles now. So I'm gonna undo that. And once you have everything kind of defined right here where you're comfortable, then we're gonna move on to all of the other settings. So all these settings over here on the left define how your brush will react. And once you set these, whenever you use your brush, they will stay as part of the settings for that brush until you alter them. So it's really awesome if you have a brand that you're working on and you want a specific brush, you'll know that it'll always operate the way you intend whenever you need to open it. Okay, so the, the first thing we're gonna do is click on Shape Dynamics. And Size Jitter is really um, only worthwhile if you're using a Wacom tablet because it will vary, as you can see right here. If you have little pressure, it'll look like this. If you have a lot of pressure, it'll look like this. But if you're just using a mouse, it won't make any difference. However, you can change the angle jitter, and you can see when I'm moving this, my little triangles are rotating, which is pretty cool. So the way that we started, um, we didn't have any jitter, and now, if I increase it, you can see all of these, let me make this a little bigger so you can see it. All these triangles start changing direction when I draw with it, which is pretty fun. Okay, so that is shape dynamics. And roundness, I don't really use that often. It kind of flips it where it feels a little bit 3D. Um, it could be pretty cool depending on what you're using it for, but I don't use it very often. Okay, so that is basically everything that I use for shape dynamics. The next one is scattering, and scattering I use quite a bit. And you can see if I increase this, they kind of span out. Um, I'll paint with this. Let me increase the scatter, and you can see it can get pretty large the further you set it. So it almost feels like confetti now. It's so spaced out. So that's pretty fun. So I'm gonna reduce this a little bit for mine. And the count um, creates how dense your brush is when you brush with it, so how many are part of it. Uh, I like being able to tell what the brush is, and you can't really tell if you have too many. Um, so I'm just gonna reduce this a little bit. Maybe I'll go to two, so it's a little denser than before. Okay, and the count jitter, um, once again, if you had a Wacom tablet, uh, the jitter of how many appear at a certain point in time could be reliant upon how much pressure you're putting on your Wacom stylus. All right, the next thing is texture, and texture is kind of cool. I don't use this one very often, but you can define a pattern. So I've got my Glitz and Glam textures right here. So if I select one of the glitter textures and I just adjust the depth, if you go too high with the depth, it becomes opaque. So you wanna keep the setting slightly low, and then you'll see, um, let me make this big so you can see it. You can see there's kind of a glitter look going on in the brush, which is pretty cool. Okay, so that's texture. I'm gonna turn this one off because I don't wanna use texture for this brush. The next one is dual brush. This means if you wanna mix it with another one of your brushes, sometimes um, it's cool. Most of the time it just looks not the way I want it to look. So I don't use dual brush very often, but that's what it does. And you can define what kind of brush you wanna mix it with and then, then you can play with these settings and kind of get it where you'd like it to be. Okay, so color dynamics is the really fun one. So if I click on this, you can see uh, we've got a foreground background jitter, which um, is how much your color varies between your foreground, which is the pink right here, and your background, which is the blue, or whatever colors you have right here. So that's how much it'll jitter between them. And you can play around with it and you can really see how that works. Um, Hue jitter, let me show you how this is working. I need to see how I've, I'm only painting with purple right now because I have uh, a jitter selected, so it's kind of pulling the 53% between pink and blue is purple, obviously, so that's why it's purple right now. But if I wanted a whole bunch of different colors, if I click this apply per tip box, you can see how much it changes already. This is really fun. So it's pulling between those two colors kind of in a 53% range. So that's what that means. And you can jitter your hue. So now we're getting, it's introducing other colors because I've increased the amount of jitter that can happen uh, between colors. And I like keeping mine 
pretty low here so I can stay within the color family that I'd like to stay in. So I'm talking about pinks and blues and purples right here. And if that's what I wanna keep it, then um, I'm gonna keep my hue jitter on the lower side. Saturation um, is just how saturated your colors are. Purity or brightness um, speaks for itself, how bright or how dark. And when you have a jitter, it's gonna jitter a lot between super bright and super dark. So I like keeping my brightness pretty low because it's going to take on the brightness of the original colors and I'll have uh, a more controlled look. But if you want a lot of jitter, then that's the place to do it. Purity, unlike these ones, which jitter, purity says this is how pure I want the colors to be. Or you could also look at it as this is how vibrant I want my overall colors to look. So if I increase this all the way, I can show you um, how they look different. So this is all the way and then this one's like right let me get it to around zero percent okay so this is the original one so you can see that the original one takes on kind of the vibrancy of the original colors whereas this one is super vibrant the higher we go and if we reduce it it's going to become even duller you can see it takes all the color out so i like keeping this one um, at zero because when i define these colors these are the colors that i want to use Okay, so I never use transfer, brush pose. You can kind of play around with the different settings here. Um, opacity jitter speaks for itself, how um, opaque your colors will appear. And let's see, brush pose. You can just play around with these. These are tilting the axes, so, or the axes. So um, just more of that kind of 3D effect going on. And noise, I never use this one. It's another form of texture. Wet edges, um, you can see the preview down here. It's kind of calling out the edges, but I don't like doing that with my brushes. Build up um, is just color build up um, the more you go. And smoothing, I always keep smoothing on and protect texture. If you um, are using the texture brush, then you're going to want to click on protect texture so it uh, is maintained. You can see preserve texture pattern when applying brush presets. So um, yeah, by holding, by just toggling over, you can see um, airbrush style buildup effects. There you go. So if you need any extra cues with what any of these do, just hold it over and it'll give you a little cue. Okay, so now that you have your brush and exactly the way you'd like it, if you wanna share it with someone else, all you have to do is um, come over here to brush presets and you, I have a ton of brush presets, but if you have fewer, then you can export it and just click save brushes and then you can share them as it dot abr file with anyone else that you'd like to share it with so that's how to create a custom brush in photoshop if you enjoyed this tutorial please subscribe i release a new design tutorial every single tuesday and don't forget to head on over to my blog every hyphen tuesday.com for even more design tutorials and a bunch of design freebies also don't forget to check out my brand new class in partnership with brit and co intro to photoshop if you've ever felt intimidated or overwhelmed by the program and you want to create your own kind of blog graphic or social media posts. This class walks you through an entire layout with text, type, textures, and photos, including basic photo editing and my favorite adjustments to apply on photos to really enhance them and take your designs further. So that class just launched and the link is on screen and in the video description. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week.